We are back in the field testing some new plastic today. Let me show you what we got. I was doing a little digging around in my brother's bag and I found this Halo Mystere. Hopefully that's how you say that, I'm not sure. 116 negative 22, which are the same flight numbers as one of my favorite drivers, the Discraft Scorch. So we have a first run Z Scorch and we also have this really sick plastic Jawbreaker Z Flex Scorch, which I never have thrown before. This also came out of his bag, so. I appreciate you, Austin. So here we go. We're set up about 330 feet away. I'm going to start with the Scorch, and then we're going to get my first throw with the Mystere. Goodness, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> what I love about the Scorch is that nice, easy turn you get out of it. The glide, it just continues to push. It's very effortless. I've always said that about the Scorch. Now, this is actually my first time throwing this Jawbreaker Z Flex one. I'm curious if it's a little bit more stable. If it is, I might just steal it from my brother. I feel like it kind of is actually. And luckily it was because I pulled it right, almost nailed that tree. The big difference here is going to be this plastic. Halo Star usually makes a mold a little bit more overstable, but we'll see if we can get a nice turn out of it. This is 173 to 175 grams. <laughs> Oh yeah, that flew like exactly like the Scorch. Initially, I thought it was gonna flip too much, but it was a very fast flip to flat that didn't turn. Very interesting there. First throws here, we are set up 330 feet away. Scorch going a little bit further than the Mystere, but very, very good flights out of both. I love the flip up that we got out of the Scorch and the Mystere there. So one of the very first things that I noticed that's quite different between the Mystere and the Scorch is the bottoms of their rim. So with the Scorch, it's very rounded off. So kind of like a Heat, a Roadrunner, if you felt those. Very smooth, but there's no like indentation there. Now with the Mystere, it's more similar to your natural drivers, I feel like, where it dips down a little bit. That is like majorly different. I kind of figured with flight numbers, the rims would always kind of be the same, if that makes sense but not with these two. We got about 340 feet to the basket here with a slight tailwind. We'll just start with the Scorches first all day long. So with the Scorch, I usually try to start them out on a little bit of hyzer, throw them really hard so I can get the flip up out of them. And if I throw them hard enough, we'll get a flip and a slight turn. So that was a line drive straight to the basket, slight turn out of it but it hyzered, I think, behind it. This one's probably really hard to see like in the blue sky, so I apologize about that. I'm gonna try to throw it similar to that. Last time, I think I threw it on too much hyzer. <laughs> okay, so I threw it very low once again. Shit, I think that almost got to the basket too. The Jawbreaker Z Flex Scorch, way more overstable than the first run. I feel like from the first two throws, I can tell that. <laughs> So there we got a little turn out of it. Man, I bet that's so hard to see too. Honestly, it flips up the flat so easily. That time we did get a little turn out of it, unlike the first throw where I felt like it just got the flat and stayed flat. So we landed a bit right side of the basket that time. I really feel like this Jawbreaker Z Flex Scorch was a really poor shot. Now granted it's only 340 feet, but we're only 10 feet from the basket. And I feel like that has to do with its glide. It kind of just wants to stay in the air. The Mystere and the Scorch, are about 30 to 40 feet past the basket. So we are 390 feet away from this basket, slightly uphill as well. So this is gonna take kind of a bomb. I'll be very happy if the Mystere or the Scorch gets there. We'll probably come up a bit short though. From what it feels like, it's kind of like a left to right wind right now. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be too low. Gosh, that thing just goes and goes and goes though. Honestly though, if that was straight out in front of me, if I hit my line, I think that's there. With the Jawbreaker Z1, I'm gonna try to give it a little flex and see what happens. <laughs> or no flex at all. That thing is so stable. That's ridiculous. For a Scorch, I mean, I threw that pretty flat. It was nose up, but I didn't want to turn at all. I think the first run would have even thrown that poorly. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, ride it. Skip up the hill. Hey, that's a putt at it. I'm happy with that. Maybe, maybe 370s, close to 380. What I'm feeling like is the Mystere flips up to flat, but I don't get as much turn out of it. Now that could be 
plenty of factors. That could be the plastic of the disc maybe making it a little bit more stable. It also could have to do with the wind as well. But with the Scorch, I feel like I get an easier, like slight turn out of it if I really want it. With the Mystere, I feel like it stays straighter for longer. It just kind of flips the flat. But so far, it's a beautiful disc. The Scorch typically goes like 10 feet further, it looks like but it's kind of keeping up pretty well. This is only about 300 feet, but I want to try the forehand. We definitely have a tailwind on this one. Oh yeah, that's money. Sit. The Jawbreaker Z might be really good for forehands. See how much more overstable that one is? Just fights so much harder. I'll try to throw a good one with the Mystere. Oh, I didn't flip it all the way. Similar, throwing them a bit lighter because it's only 300 feet, so they really kind of dive off at the end. We got about 380 feet here. I'm gonna see if we can start these out left and hold them over. <sighs> kind of like that. But even the scorch starts to come out of it, huh? I'm gonna try to give the Jawbreaker Z like a little bit more height, a little bit more turn. Okay, I am apparently never gonna turn that disc over. That is honestly crazy to me. That shows you right there, plastic does matter. I mean, granted, I'm not throwing it the best, so you can blame me as well, but definitely more stable. <laughs> the Mystere didn't really hold over like I wanted it to either. Maybe a little bit too nose up. Maybe not enough ante as well. Like I said earlier, I feel like it doesn't want to turn as much as the Scorch, so that could be something as well with the Mystere. This was kind of the last thing I wanted to try out, so I'm gonna give these three another rip on that Anheuser, see if we can uh, do a little bit better this time. It's just not enough. This one right here is the one I really want to fix. There we go but it just fights out so quickly. Based off of that shot in the first shot that I had with the uh, Z1, you can definitely tell the Z1 holds the turn a little bit longer. That one fights out a little bit quicker. And then the Mystere, I really feel like it doesn't necessarily want to hold turn. Just like the flip ups where it just kind of flipped to flat, we got turn out of it maybe one time. Man, that truck is loud. That is going to conclude this short comparison video. Honestly, the Mystere flying very nicely. I was very surprised with the Tizer flip. It was really keeping up with the first run Scorch. Honestly, if I were to put these in stability wise, I'd say first run Mystere, and then you have this beefy Scorch here. I just couldn't believe this one. But no, I, honestly, I felt like it flew really nicely. I think I kind of like the Scorch maybe a little bit more. That being said, I'd have to do way more testing with this Mystere. I also apologize if I call it the wrong name the entire time. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and we will see you in the next one.